having fun here in the studio. Welcome back to the news today. This is the Daily Debate. Plunging oil prices are putting a major strain on the Russian and the Iranian econom uh, economies who rely on the resource. Amid accusations, Saudi Arabia denies many... many manipulating prices for political goals to uh, punish Iran and Russia. At an energy forum in Abu Dhabi today, the kingdom's oil mis uh, minister pointed to a lack of cooperation of oil countries outside of OPEC as the reason for falling prices. Is it econ economics or politics? Joining me tonight is Dr. Bogulevich, expert on Russian affairs. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you very much for coming. And also Itzhak Levanon, former Israeli ambassador to Egypt and Middle East expert. Ambassador Levanon, good evening. Thank good you evening. very much for coming. Gentlemen, before we will start discussing who is winning, who is losing, or what is the current situation right now, let's see what our viewers had to say about that. Nurit. Good evening, Lucy. So a follow-up in that meeting you mentioned today in Abu Dhabi, Saudi Arabia made clear they would not cut supply and reiterated that that decision is not political. But it's never quite clear where the economics end and the politics begin. So we asked our viewers about oil as a political weapon, and namely if it's still an effective political weapon. So let's take a look, first of all, at our poll. What our viewers had to say, 62 percent said it can be used as such. 36% said no. On the comments end, we had a lot of uh, interesting and different perspectives, some from the present, some historical. Jabbar said not so much. Advanced technology in oil and gas exploration in many areas around the globe open huge resources to nations that could be affected in the past when using oil and gas as a political weapon. So what he's saying is quite optimistic. It's kind of what we're all hoping for, that renewable energy and other forms will allow oil to no longer be used so much as a political tool. Marius said, always remember it's thanks to oil that following the Six-Day War, OPEC countries forced other countries, sub-Saharan countries, to cut diplomatic relations with Israel. So uh, it wasn't exactly an OPEC embargo, but certainly an oil embargo uh, connected to Israel then. Even though it was short, could something like that happen today? Would it be effective? Kai said it can try to affect change and is certainly used all the time, but it's not a game changer. She says U.S. sanctions on Syria and oil have not stopped Assad from a four-year massacre. So, of course, uh, embargoes on any kind of oil and petrol products coming out of Syria. In fact, uh, Assad is still in power, so she may have a point there. And let's end with Lydia, who said, I think so. The question is, what has the West promised Saudi Arabia in return for hurting Iran and pushing regime change in Russia? So she goes even kind of a step further. Not only is Saudi Arabia actually playing a political game from what she says, but it's actually the West and perhaps the United States that's sort of behind it. So is that the case? I'll pass it back to you for more. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Nurit. Is that the case? Because it seems that Saudi Arabia, I, I just I really, if I want to be honest here, I cannot believe that uh, these prices are just like by accident. It happened because of a reason, and the reason is politics. Yeah, but you cannot create the reason. There is a reason always. Of course, there is a reason always. Without there reason, is a reason there will be that not plunging, the name you know, is the Iran, prices. and the name is Russia, and yeah. the name is uh, helping Syria, and the name is you name it. Look, let me just remind you and the and 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 the audience, uh, you know, before the Yom Kippur War, the prices of the barrels of oil were around the forty forty five dollars. The prices of today, it was after the Yom Kippur War and the decision taken by the Saudi Arabian and OPEC who jumped, you know, raised the prices. Definitely, in this crisis, there are people who are gaining and those who are losing. Iran is losing because there is less income. If you combine this with the sanctions, which are still on, I think that the situation in Iran is, is, is bad. Secondly, Syria will be, will be affected because Iran cannot send, you know, as usual, money and supply and everything. The same thing to Hezbollah. ISIS will be a loser because he is based on selling the oil for Mosul. He doesn't have any country or any institution or any person behind him to finance his atrocities. So the only way is to sell this oil. Now he has less income. Russia is suffering. We see the, the crisis. You have others who might gain of that situation. Before I will ask you who uh, might gain from this situation, Russia, Russia, Russia. Just maybe before going to Russia, I would say 
First of all, there is a economical change, which is partially a reason for the change of prices of oil. On one side, the United States is becoming independent, and that's a major change in the market. The second one, there is surplus of oil today because of the slowdown of the economy in Europe and many other places. So usually when you have a surplus, prices are coming down. Now, when you talk about politics, and since my friend Ambassador Lebanon started with the conspiracy of Saudi, yes, there is some, probably some conspiracy around it. The country which may gain a lot from all this change, if it's being played well, will be Saudi. The, the production of the oil is very cheap in comparison to Russia, for example. If uh, in Russia it's about 35 percent more the, the uh, cost of production. In one way or another, we can say you mentioned terrorist groups like uh, like ISIS. In one way or another, they are fighting in this way also the terrorist groups because some other jihadist uh, groups are trying to imitate uh, ISIS by uh, trying to control more oil uh, fields. And yeah, but ISIS is 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 is, is clear that they have. Captured Mosul, they captured you know, the oil fields. They're exporting and selling oil. This is the, the money they got, they're getting. They don't have any other resources. So definitely, when the prices are down, they will get less money. Less money for this. So but part of the conspiracy that I have began, <laughs> began to describe, uh, America, the United States, may suffer from it also, because there is somewhere a level where if the oil will get cheaper and cheaper, it will not pay to invest in other ways of energy in the United States. Already some companies in the United States are reconsidering their investment. And by that, maybe the United States will continue to be a client for cheap Saudi oil. But the United States is not, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, the United States is not having some let's say, um, uh, warm relationship with Saudi Arabia, and part of the warm relationship is the oil? No, they do have, uh, they do have relations, you know, with the Saudis, definitely. There is a common denominator. Uh, one is mentioned by, uh, by uh, uh, Baruch, uh, Mr. Gour, is that the United States they are uh, not only self-sufficient, they are the first producer of oil today, even before the Saudis. And they have a common uh, enemy. They have a common enemy, which is uh, Russia, which is uh, Iran, who maybe supported Assad too much. Look, incidentally, for the Americans, you know, and this is why I say that the Americans might gain from that situation, that the prices are uh, going down, uh, with Iran, for instance. America will have more leverage now, because Iran has more income, they have the sanctions. The situation is really bad. So when they will cut back, you know, to the situation, to the discussions, the the, the five, uh, the P five plus one, the Americans will have a little bit more leverage on that. The same thing, you know, with the Russians, in the confrontation, the political confrontation between Russia and Moscow, between Washington and Moscow, Washington will have a little bit more leverage, let's say, in that situation. They can put more pressure on that. Israel also is gaining. And, uh, and before I ask you why Israel is gaining, Russia, but about, about Russia, Russia, maybe they bet on the wrong course. Maybe when they bet on uh, making business with the Iranians and uh, helping uh, uh, the Syrians and being involved in, let's say, fishy, smelly uh, deals, they bet on the wrong course. I will put it uh, on two different levels. One, uh, Russia is paying a very heavy price for the for the change in the price. It's more effective on Russian economies than all the sanctions. Uh -huh. The minister, the treasurer of Russia made it very clear that they already lost about hundred uh, billion dollars or because of the change of prices. So from the air of oil. So from this point of view, they are paying a very heavy price. They build all their economy, their budget, on a barrel of, uh, of oil between 80 to $100. And, 
and now it's between 50 to 60. So they are losing around 40 to 50 percent of their income uh, on one end. On the other end, uh, the economical situation vis-a-vis -vis Iran or Syria, uh, we have to take into consideration that they are selling a lot of arms all over the world. They part of the income in the budget, and they will continue to do it, and they will increase it, is selling arms to the, uh, to the other countries. Putin, on his last visit in India, before, uh, after China, he negotiated some deal, and I don't know if you paid attention, already they subletted a submarine, a nuclear submarine, to <coughs> India, which is a lot of money, and that's only a beginning. Of, uh, of, uh, yeah, he's the more return. looking to Asia than he's looking Definitely course, uh, to, to the, the Far West. East, to, the to uh, Asia, and to South America. Uh, he tried to work out uh, deals mainly with Brazil. He tried with Argentina and some other countries, but those deals are for the long run. It's not an answer for his immediate need for money, and therefore he will go to his reserves. So if we're, you just uh, hinted and, and just uh, said in a small sentence, Israel might be gaining from all this situation as well. How are Israel's gaining? Well, Remind me. Well, well, first of all, let me put it that way. I think that we should not see uh, this uh, crisis or the lowering of the prices as a temporary situation. I think there is a strategic change now. Uh, my assessment is this will run for the coming year. It's not going to change in the coming few months. We might see this uh, lowering of the prices and the plunging, let's say, in the coming year. In that, in that regard, I'd say that Israel will have to pay less money for its oil. And if Israel will need the same quantity of oil that needs, Israel will have more hours to give, you know, for training, for exercises, for everything else. So there is a kind of a benefit a marginal benefit or, or secondary benefit. We are not in this process and we are not part of this game by lowering the prices. But as a consequence, from one side, I mentioned, you know, Syria, Iran, ISIS, all the others who are going to lose, I see that beneficial, a slight beneficial benefit, you know, to Israel, we might see it in the coming year. If we're seeing it, we can see it also in the deals that uh, Egypt and Jordan did with Israel just uh, a few months ago with the gas uh, gas deals. By the way, the, the lowering of the prices is not only the oil, the gas also. Israel might lose from the gas field, you know, that we, we have now in the sea. But I think this is relatively less than, let's say, Russia. Uh, with the gas of Russia going to Europe, uh, the, the, loss, the loss will be really tremendous there with Russia. The fear of all this, what happening uh, with the plunging of the prices, and if I will see it in a very strategic way, I am worried about what Russia will do. Russia has two ways. Or she will understand and she will, you know, uh, try to solve some issues in order to save its economy. Or Russia will go and selling weapons sophisticated weapons, attractive weapons for getting money. And in this case, we might see a problem. Well, what will happen? They already are doing it, mm -hmm. and they are, they are planning or believing that with, during the future, the near future even, Western companies are losing huge amount of money, mainly European, mainly German, because they invested a lot of money in Russia, and suddenly they have to pull out because they cannot make any business, and even in Israel. And that's something that we have to pay attention. It's marginal, it's not crucial, but Israel, the Israelis are losing quite a lot with the change in Russia. We know already that the, our farmers in, uh, in the Negev are complaining because they are selling a lot of goods to Russia. Russia is not stopped uh, buying from them. But tell me how, how it will affect uh, Vladimir Putin because, you know, for me, for us, for the people, it maybe this is, well, I'm gaining more money. But for the government, for somebody like Putin with this big presence and him being this, uh, this big, uh, let's say, president that is trying to control, this is a big hit. 
It's a big hit, and you will try to control it. How to control it? Not from the outside, but mainly in dealing with his own people. He will make a major effort that pension and salaries on the mid middle level and lower level will stay, or maybe uh, the average or the poor person in Russia may lose a little bit, but not a lot. And therefore, Putin will continue to get support. He is popular. The last poll gave him more than 80 percent. And he has something that we have to take into consideration. He has in his budget, in his treasure, 400, reminds me of 400, here in Israel. When 400 the billion gets dollars. Bad, he gets more popular. You see, one, one uh, of the characteristics of the Soviet, uh, of the Russian people, is its docility to the leaders. Putin will overcome this, and we say this in this platform, he will become Sit. the absolute leader. The absolute leader. Gentlemen, thank you very much for this small break, and then we will be back.